Ah, one, two, three, four. All right, we're back with some grappling with the text. We're working our way through the Ten Commandments. I hope you guys had a good summer. Uh, we're going to actually get into the text of the commandments, which will be fantastic. Uh, we're going to look at the first commandment today, maybe uh, next week as well, and we're going to go through there and march through the text. So, the first commandment, which is the chief commandment and the most important commandment, is this. You shall have no other gods. Now, this commandment is really quite fascinating because the Lord in this commandment is getting after the fact that he knows that we want to have other gods, that we're inclined to have other gods, and he says, nope, you're not going to do it. No other gods, none. And Luther teaches us what this means in this beautiful way in the small catechism, uh, giving us these three uh, verbs. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Now, a couple of things about the pattern of the words here, and then we're going to look at them themselves. Uh, we, we notice that on the commandments, all but the third and the fourth uh, begin with this, you shall, and the explanations begin, we should. So we, we recognize that the commandments themselves, as opposed to Luther's explanation of the commandments, it, this is coming from God to us. Luther, uh, when he's explaining it, is going to lump himself in with us and say, hey, this is all what we should, what we ought to do. Now, uh, the other thing to note about the structure is that in the explanation, we have the commandment and then Luther's explanation, and in every one of them, we have two things in common, fear and love. In fact, the expl explanation to every commandment is going to begin, we should fear and love God so that but the first commandment is different. We should fear, there's three here, we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Now, notice what, what Luther is teaching us when he explains the first commandment, is that the chief thing in this commandment is trust. Now, uh, we're going to be depending a lot in these studies on the large catechism, and really, uh, if you haven't read the large catechism, if you don't have it, you can go and download it off of Book of Concord, uh, dot org. Peter, uh, Pam, I mean, I'm sure we'll put the link to the large catechism and you can go and read that thing. It's great. It's the best. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at portions of it. But Luther is going to zero in in this commandment in the large catechism on this trust. So let's get a little bit of Luther and see what he has to say about this. Now, normally when we would start our theology talking about God, people would start with the attributes of God. They would start defining God and saying, you know, here's what the omnipotent God does. Here's the kind of things uh, that he is, and here are the things that he isn't. But Luther zeroes in on this, the idea of what makes a God is trust. What do you trust? What do you fear? What do you love? And what do you trust? Well, that is your God. Therefore, it says Luther, it is the intent of this commandment to require true faith and trust of the heart, which settles upon the only true God and clings to him alone. So that the first commandment is a matter of the heart. What does your heart cling to? What does your heart settle? What does your heart look to for all good? Luther continues. Oh, wait a minute. I'm out of order. Here, Luther says, even before that, what does it mean to have a God? Or what is a God? Answer, a God means that from which we are to expect all good. Now, it, this is amazing that it has to do with expectations, that we expect all good and to which we are to take refuge in all distress. So that to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe him from the whole heart as I have often said, that the confidence and faith of the heart alone make both God and an idol. Now, this little sentence troubled me for a long time. What is Luther saying? He's saying, look, here, here's your heart, and it's going to cling to something. Uh, it's going to trust in something. It's going to look to something for all good. It's going to run in times of trouble. What is it going to run to? What is it going to cling to? Is it going to cling to God? Well, that makes true worship. That, that is what it means to have a God. Or is it going to cling to something else? And that makes an idol. Now, in fact, Luther is going to go uh, on and list idols. But one more, uh, one more large catechism quote. If your faith and trust be right, then your God is also true. And on the other hand, if your trust is false and wrong, then you have not the true God. For these two belong together. 
faith, and God. That now I say, upon which you set your heart and put your trust is properly your God. Now, Luther's going to go through the list of six things and say, here are the most common examples of false gods. Number one, the most common god in all the world, money, mammon, possessions. And here's the thing. When we have money, we think that we have all that we need. We think that we're safe and we're secure and uh, that we have enough. Now, the, the idolatry of money is not only for the rich who have confidence in the money, but also in the poor who think that if they had enough money, they would have it. But there's a reason that when you have a dollar bill, it has an eagle on it. It's reminding you that this can fly away. And Luther, I'm sure, said at some point, oh, I haven't found it, so maybe he didn't, but that the Lord can make us rich or poor in an instant. He makes us rich or poor in a day. The next idol, says Luther on the list, which is related to money, is our skills, our power, our office, our prestige, our, our good name, uh, all these other sort of earthly uh, things that we trust. You see, And see, here's the thing. These are not bad in themselves, but they tempt us to trust and think that because I have these things, I have enough. Or because I don't have them, I don't have enough. That's the idolatry of it. The next Luther speaks of, one, two, three, is under the Pope that we prayed to the saints. And instead of praying to the Lord for help, looking to him for trouble, we, we called upon the different saints. When we had a toothache, we called the Saint Apollonia and so forth. The fourth uh, idolatry is that of magic, that of the, sor the sorcerers who have made a vow to the devil uh, to have power over people or wealth or anything. Or anything. That's a gross idolatry, and that's listed there. Another gross idolatry that Luther talks about is that of the heathen, uh, the praying to Zeus or Venus or Mercury or all these sorts of things, these pagan sort of gods. And, and we kind of look at that and we say, oh yeah, that was back in the day. But notice that this kind of paganism is coming back, and we are living in the time of a revival of, the, of this, heathenism and magic. Now, the sixth idolatry, Luther says, is the most extreme. And I, I want you to kind of a pause and set you up here and say, what would, what would be the most extreme idolatry, the thing that tempts us to trust in it more than anything else in all of the world? The most extreme and gross idolatry, which brings the most offense to God, Luther says is, this is so great, our works. That we trust in our works, in our doing, in our accomplishments, in the things that we have done, and we think that now God must love us because I've accomplished something. Now, this is what we call the opinio legis, the, uh, that is the opinion of the law, which says, because God is mad at me because of my sin, he must be happy with me when I do good works. But this is a false logic of the flesh. How is God happy with us? It's not because of our works. I mean, even if we could manage to do a good work, it wouldn't be because of that, but rather it's because of Christ and the cross. And, and this is what lives now, what we trust in and what we cling to is God revealed to us in Christ. This is why our works are the most extreme idolatry and the most dangerous thing. So what do we trust in? We don't trust in our works. We don't trust in Zeus. We don't trust in magic. We don't trust in the saints. We don't trust in ourselves or our possessions. Rather, we trust in the Lord who sent his son to live and to die for us. And when we do that, then we have the right God. That which we put our heart and trust is properly our God. So we trust in Christ. All right, there you go. That's an introduction to the first commandment. We'll have to talk about this more uh, in, the, uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, but I hope it's good. It's good to see you guys, by the way. We got some more things to plug. We've been, we've had a busy summer. Let me see if this high tech gizmo works. Let me see. Oh yeah, I can look at you guys. I can see you guys face to face. Oh, you can't see me face to face. Is this gonna work? Oh yeah. This is high tech grappling with the text. Good to see you guys. We've done a couple of things. Uh, got a few things going this summer. The first is uh, we've got the worldwide Wolfmuller uh, plugging along a little bit more, and so. Uh, if you go and visit that, it's wolfmuller.co, and I'm sending out a little uh, email each week called Wednesday Whatnot. So you can find that there under the About tab, or if you move around to the page, it'll flash up and ask you to sign up for that. So that's going on. Also, we're going to do a trip to Germany. Look at that Wittenberg Castle there. Uh, no, the castle, uh, the Wartburg Castle. Uh, we're going to go next June. So if you want to go to Germany uh, with us, 
then that would be great. And finally, uh, the book that we've been talking about has uh, come out. Has American Christianity Failed? Uh, it's here. I'll tape it to the page. <laughs> uh, you can buy it at cph.org or whatever. Uh, you can find it. Um, and let me know what you think about it. Oh, that's great. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, glad to be back grappling with the text. Uh, oh, uh, the other thing we want to try to do is apparently my dad, who's a YouTube research guru, has said that if you get 25 comments and 25 likes on a page, then they, uh, they, they think it's trending. So if each of you would go and like this video 12 and a half times, we'll be there in no time. So thanks for that. Uh, stay tuned.